this rage is building in me, and I'm, I'm pleading with God under my breath, God, help me, help me get control here. Um, my kid's you know, scared to death here from what I just did, screaming at them to shut up and don't say a word or I was going to smack both of them across the face. I'm pretty sure that's what I said. And I can remember my hand just, I'm, I'm holding on to that steering wheel with all I can because something was just wanting me to peel my hands off that steering wheel and just take my arm and go right across their faces. It just, I, everything in me wanted to do that. And that was not like me. I was not, a, I've never been a violent person before or after that moment. But I was just, this rage was just building in me. And, and I, I didn't know what to do with it. I had never experienced anything like this before. By the grace of God, I got the kids home to the trailer, and I said to them, go in the trailer and tell Kathleen that I'll be back later. I need to get alone with God, and, and I'll just be back. And blurted it out, and they were happy to get out of the car. And as soon as I left the trailer, there was just a corner that I turned, and I turned that corner, couldn't wait to get there fast enough because I let out this scream. Now it was just getting dark and I let out this animalistic scream at the top of my voice, ah! but with intensity you know, 50 times louder than that. And that's all I could do to relieve, relieve this pressure that was inside of me that just wanted to blow the top of my head off it felt like. My heart was racing, beating fast, and I was sweating by this time. So I just began to just scream as loud as I could scream. And this guttural animal noise of type, I mean, it just, I wanted to make as much noise as I could because that's the only way I knew how to get this pain that was inside my head, some of it released. And so as soon as I began to do this, again, I couldn't see very well. It was affecting my vision. Um, part of me was thinking, I'm, I'm, I'm going off the deep end. I need to be in, a, in, a, in an insane asylum. I need to have a straitjacket put on. I'm going crazy. Uh, I don't know why I'm going crazy, but I'm going crazy here. This, this is absolutely the most bizarre thing I've ever experienced in my life. I'm a 38, 39-year-old guy that's ready to go into rage and kill. Well, that desire had gone. I just wanted relieved of this pressure. Well, out of the trailer park, out on Lake Michigan Drive, there was a, a power um, substation of some sort, and uh, there was a little two-track down there not far, and I know I could get down there, and I could shut the car off, and then I could just concentrate on what was going on. So within just two or three minutes, I was there and had some privacy, thank goodness, shut the car off. And I just began to just scream, just screaming, screaming, and screaming, and yelling, and screaming. My voice was getting hoarse because I'd already been doing this the whole time I was there, or going to there. And, and I began to ask God. I began to say, God, I've been asking the Lord to help me with this. What's happening? Help me. You know, stop this. Everything I knew to ask God, I was asking him. And I even begin to quote this particular scripture to him. Lord, you said that any time I'm tempted that you would give me a way out of this temptation. Well, I'm asking and trusting, and this is just getting worse. This isn't getting better. And, and, and it was scary and frightful. And, and, and I didn't, it's like I say, it's difficult for me to share these words, uh, though it's been... You know, nearly 20 years ago, it still was difficult then to tell this to anybody. In fact, it was years before I ever shared this, other than with my wife Kathleen and the kids that later that night. But anyway, I'm asking God for help. You know, I'm quoting that scripture, and and I and nothing's happening. And I'm thinking, I'm going off the deep end. You know, I'm just I'm just gonna I'm gonna become a blubbering idiot. And I'm losing, having a nervous breakdown. I don't know what that's like, but I guess I'm having a nervous breakdown. Uh, and I'm going off the deep end. And, and they're going to haul me off in a paddy wagon as soon as they find me, I guess. These are the only thoughts that I have that I go through my mind. And so my voice had given out from all of the yelling. And, and it was getting 
hoarse and getting weak, and, and it wasn't helping my head any, maybe a little bit, but, but the intensity of this anger and rage, it, it was beyond anger, it was rage, had taken over in my head, I, I couldn't see anymore, and I had my eyes closed, of course it was dark by this time, and, and th then I began to hear thoughts Thoughts that were very weak at first, and then they began to grow louder in my mind. And there was really words, and the words were, if you'll just curse the Lord, all this pain will go away. And I answered back this thought, not realizing that it was a thought other than my own. I just answered myself back, and I said, well, why would I want to curse the Lord? He's the one I'm asking for help here. Why would I want to curse him? No. And then this voice inside my head said, no, if you'll curse him, this will all go away. Besides, look at this. You quoted him this scripture, uh, and it's not working, is it? See, you can't trust him. You can't trust him. He's not going to give you a way of escape from this time of your trial. See, you can't really trust him. So just curse him, and you'll feel better. Well, <clears throat> I, I answered that voice a few times saying, no, I'm not going to curse him. And I began to say it out loud. No, I'm not going to curse God. That's crazy. Well, then this voice intensified inside me and said, curse him. You'll feel better. You know you want to. You'll feel better. Well, after hearing this a few times, the desire become, this desire welled up in me to want to curse God. Just begin to just spew as many f foul mouth words that I could think of toward him, okay, which had never in my whole life had ever come to me. I mean, I never wanted to curse God. I wasn't sure I believed in him, but I had no intention or desire to ever curse God. But this intense desire was growing with this voice fueling this desire, curse God and this pressure will all go away and you'll get back to normal and everything will be okay. And it grew louder and louder and, and the temptation grew stronger and stronger and, and I began to cry out to God, God help me, help me. I'm going to curse you and I don't want to curse you. This is going to happen soon if you don't help me stop this because it's going to happen. And finally, it seemed like forever, but I'm sure it was only maybe 15 minutes to half an hour. Um, a little, little, little voice, way in the back of my being somewhere. Well, this loud voice was, curse God, and you'll feel better. This little voice, like on the other side of my head or other side of my brain, starts playing real softly inside my being, and this little voice said, what has the Lord ever done to cause you to curse him? And I thought, yeah. And I answered back this loud voice, and I say to this loud voice, well, what has the Lord ever done that would want me to curse him? And this voice is screaming inside my being, just curse him and you'll feel better. That's what you want. You want to feel better. You want this pain to go away. Well, it'll go away if you're just cursing. And then this other voice says, what has the Lord ever done to cause you to curse him? And I would answer back the loud voice again, no, I'm not going to curse him. I don't want to curse him. I'm not going to do that. And this voice got louder, yes, you want to curse him. Curse him, you'll feel better. He deserves it. You, look, he's not helping you. He's the one that is allowing this pain to happen. Curse him. He deserves it. And this battle was going on back and forth. Curse him. I don't want to curse him. Curse him. I don't want to curse him. Curse him. I don't want to curse him. That's dumb to curse God. You don't curse God. That's crazy to curse God. Curse him. And the desire to want to curse him was growing. And finally, I must have pleaded one last time, Lord, help me. If you don't help me here, I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know what I'm going to do. And suddenly, this little voice that was countering the voice wanting me 
to curse the Lord, like a little song began to well up inside. I think it was my spirit. I don't think it was my mind. I think it was my spirit, but how do I know for sure? And this little song started kind of as a word, but then built into like a little sing song, if you will. Said, the Lord is not worthy to be cursed. He's only worthy to be praised. And this voice is screaming, curse him. You know you want to curse him. This little song would play back. The Lord's not worthy to be cursed. He's only worthy to be praised. And then this voice would scream louder, and this one got a little louder and a little louder. And I began to be, I began to be able to separate the two voices and let them kind of go at each other and, and remove myself as though I'm the third party here though that was difficult, and I'm thinking to myself, yeah, you know, what has the Lord ever done to me that would cause him to be worthy to be cursed? I mean, he's only done good things. I mean, he saved me from taking my life. He's given me another chance at marriage. Um, he's given me two beautiful kids, uh, two precious children. Uh, I've got my health, you know, I'm, I've got a good job. You know, why would I want to curse the Lord? That's the dumbest thing in the world. Why would I want to do that? Because this voice is saying the pain will go away. That's why, and it's just hammering and it won't stop and I can't stop that voice. But this little voice over here changed and it went from the Lord to Jesus. And it went, Jesus is not worthy to be cursed. He's only worthy to be praised. Jesus is not worthy to be cursed. He's only worthy to be praised. And I thought about that. I kept thinking about that. And I thought, yeah, I agree with that. Well, <clears throat> I had heard that praise, praise is a valuable tool is a valuable arrow in our quiver to fight spiritual warfare. I had heard that, but I had never applied, excuse me, applied it like what I now was desperate to try. And so I, I put my hands up. Now, I always thought this was religiously fanatical, okay? This was fanaticism to, to be raising your hands, you know, as a Christian. I, I just thought that was really fanatical at that time. Well, that was, again, my lack of knowledge and my pride that God was dealing with in different ways, which is what he was dealing with at this particular moment, among other things, okay? Um, and I began to raise my hands as these two voices were going back and forth, and the torment was still there, though it was a little less. And I'm saying, I, I began to speak out loud what I was hearing this little voice over here say, and I raised my hands and I said, Lord Jesus, you're not worthy to be cursed. You're only worthy to be praised. Lord Jesus, you're only worthy to be praised. You're not worthy to be cursed. You've done nothing that deserves anybody cursing you. Anybody cursing you. You've only given mankind your best, your goodness. And I began to say that over and over. And as I did that, this voice that was trying to tempt me to curse God, it began to get quieter. And this pressure in my head began to lessen. And, 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 and a joy, a peace came over me, OK? And I just began to say over and over and over, Jesus, you're not worthy to be cursed. You're only worthy to be praised. I praise you, Lord Jesus. And it was such a blessing, okay? And that voice that told me to curse God, it finally was totally silenced. And, and I, it, the pressure and the anger was gone, okay? And I was back to normal. I could see and I could think clearly. And I was, and a presence came that I know was from the Holy Spirit, and it just descended upon me. And, and I felt so refreshed and so alive and so at peace with God and, and so confident in God, okay? And I, I just praised the Lord for, I don't know, maybe it was an hour or so after that. Just, just lifted my hands and sang to him and praised 
just praised him over and over and the Lord thank you for delivering me of this and thank you for being faithful uh, to, to, to give me victory over then this temptation that I've had. And then it kind of stopped and I began to ask the Lord, God, what was this all about? Why did I go through this thing on a Friday night? You know, I, I could see that it had been, been building up through the week and it had intensified the Wednesday and Thursday because this was on a Friday. It got more intense at work on Friday and I was agitated at night and hadn't been sleeping and all kinds of things was going on. I said, God, why did you allow this? What's this all about? Okay? And I began to get, well, the Holy Spirit began to speak to my spirit, okay? And he said, you had prayed a prayer, and you wanted to know if the devil had power over Christians. Well, now do you have some understanding of that prayer? Do you believe that the devil has power over Christians if I allow them to be sifted by the devil? And I thought, oh, Lord, yes. Oh, wow. And I began to realize, I began to realize many different things um, about this. But I realized, I had an awareness that if I had not had God's protection around me my whole life, if I had not had his divine protection by his holy angels, okay, I, I mean, the devil would have consumed me at a young age. I, I had this awareness that the devil would consume every human being, every person that had a heart to want to be pleasing and to know God. The devil would sift them, would, 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 would take their lives probably, or to make them insane, or who knows what he would do. But he has great power to be able to do that. But by the grace of God's protection, um, he's not allowed to inflict that type of torment upon Christians, except when God allows him to sift us like wheat. And that is exactly what I had been uh, through. I had been sifted like wheat. It was in a shorter manner as, uh, as uh, Peter was sifted, but it was a type of trial that evidently uh, I needed. Maybe God was testing my heart to see um, how determined I would be to fight uh, for the right thing, to, to ask the Lord for help and how long I would trust him before uh, I was willing to give up, before it would come. I don't really have all the answers of what God was trying to accomplish through all of us other than to show me that, yeah, the devil's real. And yeah, the devil didn't just sift Peter back in Luke chapter 22 verse 31 and 32. And I want to just share that again with you because if you've been flipping channels and maybe you've tuned into this broadcast a little late, I was just sharing uh, with the viewing, listening audience earlier when I read this scripture in Luke chapter 22, verse 31 and 32. And Jesus says, Simon, Simon, indeed, Satan has asked for you that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for you that your faith should not fail, and when you have returned to me, strengthen your brethren. And I was sharing that uh, this is really the only, only portion in the New Testament that really talks about a Christian believer being, uh, being uh, given an opportunity to sift somebody as intensely as Peter was sifted.